all right welcome back everyone to another video and in this one i would like to show off this um solar charge controller it is a true mppt solar charge controller and it's made locally in india um actually quite close to where i live so why i want to show this off is that i haven't seen any videos of this online and i bought it in anticipation of you know just to see how it's made um again this is not like a they didn't send me this i bought it um and i haven't even heard about them until i like saw them on amazon and stuff so just wanted to show like these things exist uh, a lot of stuff that you would get with mppt in india has um an inverter attached to it so it's usually made for larger solar um, power systems where um you are going into ac mains or have uh, loads that are basically ac mains and you don't care about um, you know having a dc output whereas this one is dc output it takes a dc load it takes d uh, of course solar is dc and then uh, a 12 volt uh, supply so it's 12 volt solar 12 volt supply i think this one's 10 amp um and then um, um about a 12 to like 14 volt i'm, I'm using an lfp pack um so yeah uh just wanted to show this off uh as i said i haven't seen many videos and i was curious about how it looked so here's the vendor um and this is how it looks from the back it has these dust proof wire covers but um these aren't waterproof the casing isn't waterproof in any way um and um yeah so i'll uh just moving this right. so i'll open this up first uh, i have to change the wires on it i i had it on test for a while i have to ch move change the wires on it and i have to um you know show you guys what's inside so while I'm opening this up, what I want to talk about what MPPT is. So you need to keep in mind that unlike your uh, run of the mill batteries, solar power is basically a power generation source, not a chemical power source. And so it behaves a bit di differently and that's why you need MPPT. Um, it will only, um, you know, generate enough power um that the load requires at a minimum sort of it's, it's it's the way you can think about it so if you have a 14 volt battery you connect to it uh if it's if it has enough sunlight to generate 0.8 amps at 14 volts it'll do that not it'll not bump up the you know it, it cannot bump up the voltage to 17 volt it will generate 14 volts um and uh, and like in a in a chemical charge system uh it will you know if you have a battery that's charged to say 20 volts or more and you have another battery that's at 17 volts uh, the battery will drop the the, uh, the overall total uh, voltage in the circuit will drop to 17 volts but you have an increase um uh, of current um because it's inversely proportional now in in a solar panel that doesn't happen uh you don't have uh, an increase uh, of current you just have the drop in voltage and the current drops uh, accordingly um, so it's actually generating way less power than you would hope for um, and you don't get the full efficiency of your solar panels and that's why we use mppt now pwm is a way of uh, you know sort of playing around with this uh, where it's not directly connected it sort of pulses it so that it intermediately reaches its uh, full potential and then like drops down to the voltage um but j that's just a way to play around um not not doing the actual work uh, and in essence uh, an mppt charge controller is just a buck converter uh you are take you the way the reason mppt is called maximum power point tracking is because it's constantly tracking the maximum power so solar output that a panel can provide at a given time uh so if it it can do 17 volts at one amp and the source and the load only requires 14 volts but it uh, it can handle greater current 
um, it will distribute that as such. So it will take in 17 volts at one ad amp, step down the voltage, boost up the current, and and you have a higher uh, current capacity that you need at a lower uh, voltage. So your solar panel is being logged in at you know its maximum power point capacity and then your um uh your load is running at a, at the optimal voltage and uh, amperage that needs to run um that's as best i can do in a layman's term um maybe watch some videos about how buck converters and boost converters work uh but for now um here we are inside um, the box it's a full metal box very sharp which is make sure you're well, well clear clear of that uh, la nice large big capacitors um, and the way you tell um, a, a fake MPT versus a good MPP a, a, D, a true MPPT is with the inductor so if there's an inductor there's a large um, you know boost or buck happening um, some MPTPTs do do boost, but that's not very efficient. And I'll tell you about my experience with this panel in a bit, but I just wanted to show the circuit off. Um, nothing very complicated um, here. It does have what seems like a connection for BLE. I have to ask the vendor what that's for and a couple more headers. So eventually I'd like to go get into it and, you know, see what those headers mean. So like you can see, uh, one header is shorted on over here. So maybe that's, you know, bat select or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll have to ask around what that is. But if that's actual TX and RX and I can use it in some way, uh, then that's just as well. And I'll, uh, and I'll play around with it. Um, Right, so what I need to do is get these off um, and I need to remember what each of them are for because the the labeling is just um, the PCB silk screen is hidden behind this. So I'll have to take them out and uh, take a look. But um, at the back, I'm not going to take it off. You can see it. There's a bunch of MOSFETs that's driving the uh, boost circuit um, and the micro is like a pick controller. And there's a TI chip that's a dedicated solar charge control. So, you know what, I'll, I'll take it out and I'll show it to you. There's no point in half-assing this. All right, so here we are. Uh, I should not do it too often because uh, I might just pull apart this um, MOSFET here. Um, yeah, so here's a backing of, um, you know, thermal conductive tape. I might just replace that, doesn't look very um, well, and these aren't my fingerprints. Right, so uh, let's see what's the best way of showing off, because I might as well take all the wires off, they need to go. Uh, right, so that this chip, is a ti part that basically does all your um actual solar charge controlling so like sensing and then run uh, driving the mosfets and the boost circuit and all that crap um here's your main microcontroller i couldn't find much on it looks like a pick um part uh, and that controls your lcd your um voltage detection and current load detection and uh you know actually drives this chip um and probably has all the powerpoint tracking logic in it um big resistors wherever you see them they are for um you know our current load direction uh and then a couple of uh, uh, like stuff here not sure what this one is i think they they have a little five volt um buck circuit on its own to drive the logic they have a USB port here as well, which uh, I'm not sure if that provides power um, or is for pro onboard programming, but I doubt that. Uh, but that's not populated. There's a hidden 12 volts in supply, which I'm 
yep that seems to be on the same rail as the load so this is for output um but they don't have a cutout in the main uh, in 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 on the case to you know do anything useful with it uh so that's 12 volts or that looks like 5 volt power that's little tiny uh buck circuit to provide power to the logic and lcd and everything else and yeah that's about it very simple design it's a uh, buck only so your panel voltage and um load voltage on the panel needs to be at high, higher than your battery voltage but it'll be more efficient than a PWM only uh, controller. So what I did want to do um, was to uh, first <sighs> replace all of the wires. So for that. All right, so wires are in place now. The only thing I want to do uh, is to add new thermal stuff, thermal uh, pad or something to the MOSFETs because these sticky tapes make it very risky for me to remove the back plate when I want to remove it. So I'll just end up um, adding thermal no, pads and removing these plates, these uh, sticky material. That way, every time I want to remove it, which should not be that often, but if I do, I'm not damaging the MOSFETs. All right, so I have this stuff that's left over from an old SSD mount and the plan is I'll uh, cut it into five equal parts and uh, stick it on each of the MOSFETs and this should provide a nice cushiony thermal interface to the backing and not be overly you know, or not be overly sticky. So, all right, so that is straight up a much better solution in my opinion. And to close this out, all we have to do is put these two together, make sure everything aligns, and then we are good to go. Uh, all right, everything's in place the way I wanted it to be, and can see the new pads from here they all look nice and tidy and i can now close this out so here's my uh, lfp power pack see the specifics here and i'll just connect that to the voltage in and battery in and if everything goes according to plan they should not blow up and there you go that's initializing
So, uh, I don't have a solar panel in this area of the house. So I am going to emulate it with my power supply. I have set it at a maximum of 23 volts, capped it at 2 amps. Now start at 7 volts and we'll increase from there and see how everything reacts to it. All right, so start it up and I don't know if at this point it will detect the solar voltage, but every time it cycles, it updates that. Uh, let's see. No. So let's increase that to 13. And still doesn't show us the solar voltage although i'm seeing a bit of power draw now let's move to 14. Uh, and yeah you can see 13.6 volts on spv so readings a bit low but that's fine we are waiting for the cutoff point where it starts charging, which is around 17 volts. So that's kind of the peak of any given um, um, solar power system. And I'm at 15 volts, still nothing. 16 volts, um, and no. And then I'll just skip to 17 volts and it should start charging. Maybe, yep, there you go. The lights come on. And you can see it's charging at 1.7 amps and now the battery current uh, is 2.9 amps because the MPPT stuff is working. And if in this situation I would have connected my battery directly to my power supply, it would have gone into constant current mode and you know dropped the voltage to the battery's volt which is 12.8 or whatever the current voltage was showing right now. Yeah, 12.9 uh, 12 so it's charging but what's happening currently is that it's constantly switching between constant current and constant voltage mode uh, because it's maxing out the available capacity I'm setting up so I've set up 17 volts and 2 amps it's drawing 17 volts at 2 amps so if I move it over to 18 volts um, it'll draw 18 volts at 2 amps um, and now the battery is charging at 3 amps again because even though the current that's coming into the um, charge controller is just 1.8 amps or 2 amps, uh, it's um, it's actually boosting it up. Uh, I can go, I think, up to 20 or 21 volts. So that's 19. And it's charging at 3.1 amp. I think it has sort of... Battery can take more. Let's go up to 21 volts at uh, 2 amps, and at this point, it should be charging at 3.6 amps. So, yeah, I can now even increase the amp uh, on the power supply, and then you can see it's just drawing 2.8 amps now and charging the battery as 55.2 amps. And that's sort of the maximum I'm going to keep because this thing can only take in a charge of 6 amps because it's a 6000 mAh cell pack and um, yeah you can see the I don't know if you can but you may be able to hear the fans on my power supply spinning up but yeah that's MPPT working 21 volts 2.8 amp comes in and 13.3 volts 5.2 amp goes out to the battery I'm kind of curious how well it handles because I know there's some issue with this battery when if it's too much charged it'll not um it'll not work properly i don't know something happens with um uh, with it where it reports a very different current all right so that was it a locally made mppt charge controller working uh, and i showed you the insides so uh yeah 
if you have good sunlight then this is a very 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 useful thing to have if you don't have good sunlight and as i found out it's not really worth putting a solar panel up uh but thank you so much for watching i hope to see you in next one and bye